Okay, here we are. Hi, everyone. James Twyman, David Hofmeister, sitting and looking at a beautiful canyon. Oh, my goodness. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Not only the physical beauty, but the inner beauty that is radiating from this spot. Extraordinary. And so we wanted to invite you to join us. <laughs> and just a second ago, David and I said, well, what should we do this talk on? And I said, I don't have any idea. And he said, I don't have any idea either. So we said, that's the talk, <laughs> not having any idea. Yeah, you can hear the wind whispering, too. It's, it's joining us <laughs> behind. This is the wind whipping through the trees. <laughs> so let's talk about that whole I, the idea of not having an idea. That's yeah. funny. But the experience, maybe, of not having any idea. Isn't that what A Course in Miracles is bringing us to the experience of no idea. Yes, being clueless, like Chauncey Gardner yeah. and being there. <laughs> yes, one of my favorite movies. That's right. And for me, this is becoming more and more prevalent. I don't really have any idea of what I'm here to do, to say. And that leads us right into one of my favorite parts of the Course, you know, where you know, he's saying that that's all we need to do, is to have no idea and to just ask the Holy Spirit to speak through us and as us. And so my release of the tension of the idea is what brings me into the experience. Yes. And I think it's delightful because just today has been a perfect example of that. Uh, James and I started off at a little town called Camus and we were in different cars and we drove down to Walmart in Heber City and then it just struck us. Both of us were looking for a place to have a cup of tea or coffee, and we both looked at each other, and we both were thinking the same right. thoughts, so we hopped in the same car, went off to have our tea and coffee, and then had a beautiful drive out here, and it's it's just been orchestrated where yeah. we didn't really have an idea that that's the way it's going to go. Well, I think that is the key, is that when you release the tension of the idea or the thought form that you've been holding, when that's released, then everything becomes effortless. Because it's, it, I have this image of this river, and and we're we're holding onto this branch or a tree or a bush at the side of the river, and it takes such great effort to resist the current. But the the moment you let go, the tension is released, and it just takes you. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to do anything. You just need to follow the current. Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of times, one of the things in the twelve step program, the the serenity prayer has been so powerful for me. And, and when people say, how does the Course of Miracles relate to the Serenity Prayer? And I say, well, the Course is just an expanded mm -hmm. version of the Serenity Prayer of knowing that there's some things you have control on over other things you don't. And the wisdom to know the difference is really the Holy Spirit. So to me, that's why it's so important to not have an idea because if you have set ideas of what your life is to be and how it's to look, it doesn't leave room, doesn't leave space for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to guide that we're supposed to be right in the moment, spontaneously mm -hmm. listening and following and being flowed through, sung mm -hmm. through, spoken through, mm -hmm. laughed through, hugged through, and we have to leave a space yeah. for that. Well, the awakening has to be spontaneous. It's never planned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't. You don't plan. I'm going to awaken <laughs> next Tuesday. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that it just doesn't work that way. It's when you release all of those ideas, and when when you're truly open and available, then the awakening occurs on its own. So it's really just about us giving up, surrendering, turning it over, allowing it to be done already, and. And that's where the miracle occurs. Yes. It's kind of fun, too, because Jimmy and I both kind of have been talked about in many names, and some of them positive and some of them negative, but peace troubadours. And, and it's so fun. It's kind of a rare thing when, when two peace troubadours that, that go circling around the globe mm -hmm. in many different ways happen to be sitting together and find themselves looking over a beautiful canyon, and the, the moment has just brought them together, because the goal has been peace, and then the forms come however they come, but it's been quite a ride. It's been quite an adventure, I'd have to say. Oh my goodness. And the other thing we were just talking about is how the awakening needs to be compelling. The compelling nature of waking up. 
because if it's somber, who would want to go there? Yeah. I mean, but when it's joyous and alive and vibrant and, and, and once again, that happens by giving up all of my ideas. Because let's face it, it's never going to match my ideas. It, it never goes the way we plan. And so give up the plan. Yeah. And just let it be spontaneous. <laughs> And then it, it takes you rather than you having to take it. It figures you out instead of you having to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's yeah. just fun, isn't it? It is fun. We, we <laughs> were at Camelot today. Some of you have heard that famous song, Camelot. I know it sounds a bit bizarre, bizarre but, but in Camelot, Camelot, Camelot. Camelot. <laughs> That's how <laughs> conditions are. <laughs> yeah, we, we were driving through a canyon today, and we both were wandered into Camelot, and uh, it was vacant. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> Actually, was for there. sale. Yeah, the Camelot yeah. was for sale. Mm -hmm. even. But we just had a fun time uh, exploring. We were like explorers. thing today. is, Camelot is always for sale. <laughs> the question is, are you willing to pay the price? <laughs> and are the price willing? is everything. Yeah, everything it's, you believe. That's right. Everything you've ever thought was true, <laughs> that's what it costs to uh, be in Camelot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stranger than fiction. We're... we're Really feeling the draw and the call to the real world, to the happy dream, compelled mm -hmm. into the happy dream is what it's what's feeling like. Well, when you give up, when when you are practiced at giving up the idea of what this is supposed to be, it's like the Holy Spirit grabs you with its tractor beam, and then there's no escaping. When 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 you have given up all of those thoughts, all of those ideas then you become claimed so thoroughly by the Holy Spirit that there is no escape. Thank God. There never really was <laughs> yeah. any escape. This is a done deal no matter how you cut it. But we cut time short yeah. by just surrendering to that tractor beam, being pulled into the Enterprise, and then we're off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fun being with Jimmy, too, because I, I was recalling a, a talk I gave at a Unity Church in Lexington, Kentucky, many, many years ago where my friend Mason had invited me, and uh, and I was talking about Lesson 128, which is something that Jimmy and I just mm -hmm. were talking about a little while ago, and and when I talked about it, the world I see holds nothing that I want, uh, my friend Mason said, oh, that's where I shut the book. I actually said to Jesus at that point, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, that's There's enough. There's plenty here that I want. That's exactly. He said, when I read that lesson, I just absolutely shut the book, and I said, Oh, wow, 129 is such a great lesson. And he said, what's that? Because he never made it to 129. And I said, beyond, beyond this, this world, world, there is a world, world that I, I want. want. Yeah. And then Jimmy was just saying that those were like three, that's like the three lessons. If you just had to have three lessons, those two, mm -hmm. and then I am as God that created me. That really gets to the core, to the essence of the whole teachings of A Course in Miracles. Yeah. And, and one of the other great statements in the workbook is, there's nothing in this world that I really want. And the word really is the critical word, yeah. that, word there because it's, it's about, you know, what, what do you really, really want more than anything? Now, you could say, well, I want to have a meal for, you know, this evening. I, I want to have a place to lay my head. But that's not what you really want. And that's what Jesus is talking about. You know, what is the thing that you, your soul is most longing for? And, of course, the answer is to know thyself, to, to know who you really are and to live from that place. And the world of form is the master illusionist. It, it, it distracts you here, it pulls your attention there, all trying to dissuade you away from that simple truth that there's nothing in this world that I really want except to awaken to who I have always been and who I cannot change. And so it's okay to look at this beautiful landscape that we're looking at and say, this is lovely. You know, I, I don't have to give this up because every loving thought comes with me. But what I really want more than anything is to wake up and to remember who I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's the line that, in the course. The peace of God is my one goal, mm -hmm. the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose, my function, and my life <laughs> while I abide where I am not at home. And that's such a focus a point of reference for all of us so we don't have to mm. get distracted in a lot of tangents. Mm -hmm. We can just say, oh, yeah, that's right, it's peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and everything can support that if we are focused on those three lessons. There's nothing in this world that I really want. 
Beyond this world, there is a world that I want, and I am as God created me. And by the way, looking at the, that one lesson, those, those two critical words, I am, the sacred name of God, I am that. So I am, God is, as God created me. Yeah. I am as God created me. Wow, I mean, that has some pretty deep mystical teachings to it. When you realize that you're claiming the presence of God through the name of God, which is your name as well, the I am presence. Yeah. So it just it just begins to, it's like we were talking before, it's a vortex. I, I often say that people sometimes mistake A Course in Miracles for being a book. It's not a book. <laughs> I mean, okay, it has pages, it has words. But it's not really a book. It's a vortex. And if you let that vortex suck you in, it just pulls you and, and everything starts. The, the, the closer you get to, to the drain, yeah. maybe that's what pulls yeah. us into the real world. <laughs> the vortex, you ultimately get down to the drain and then you pop through. Yeah. And then you look out and everything's different. And yeah. yet nothing changes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're doing. That's it. That's it. <laughs> We're just riffing and having great ideas. We we had some riffing ideas uh, the last day or two of uh, of doing a cruise mm -hmm. uh, from maybe like San Diego down to Puerto Vallarta and calling it movies and music and miracles. We had some ideas of some collaborators we could invite, mm -hmm. and we've even talked about having some kind of a nice gathering out here in the canyon. But so if you're listening. And, uh, you know, we're all ears, too. You know, we're, this is a collaborative venture. It's a joyful adventure. It's a compelling adventure. Yep. And it takes that It's a fun adventure. Yes. Jump in. Dive yeah. in. We're, we're so thrilled about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, nothing left. I mean, that's, you get to the point where you realize there's just really nothing left. You've, you've done it all. You've seen everything you need to see. So let's go here. Yeah. The borderland, as the course calls it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad we turned on this little recorder I so know. we can share this, share this spontaneous yes. thing that we call <laughs> awakening. Yeah. Letting go of the idea and just entering into the experience. Mm -hmm. That's something else, by the way, before we leave that we talked about I earlier is that Jesus is bringing us met um, methodology. No, what's the word? Jesus is bringing us into a spontaneous experience of awakening, not an idea of awakening. As long as you're holding on to the idea of what it will be, then you're never going to be able to, to access the experience of what it is right now. Because the awakening is happening right now. It's happening as you. You're already enlightened. I mean, enlightened just means filled with light. Now, you can walk around with your eyes closed and not see that or know that, but it doesn't change it. And so the experience is what we're, we're seeking, not an idea of whatever, forgiveness, whatever the, it is in the course that you're reading. But if you enter into that vortex with any paragraph, any paragraph will take you there. Then it's the experience that grabs hold, and then suddenly that's it. There's yeah. nothing left. Yeah. That's it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks Have a for joining. blessed day. Bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>